bar at Cowfish, which serves both burgers and sushi, and this amazing Manhattan with a piece of candied bacon. So I have here a sake sampler. I got Asian pear, the violet one, hot cucumber, and hot lime. Splendid. <laughs> Kathleen, would you like that sushi? No, thank you. How would you feel about having you don't sushi? Have to. You don't have to. I have might vomit on you. <laughs> so would you say that Cowfish is a good place to come, whether you like sushi or not? It is. You can get burgers. What's going on there? What's, uh, what's that? What's that fire? That was a little too much wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm okay, this is very good. Okay, this is what was it? Just a piece of salmon with a lot of, lot of, lot of wasabi. <laughs> as applied by yourself or as applied by As applied by myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm going in for more. <laughs> just had a really great dinner at Cowfish, ate all the sushi humanly possible, and one thing happened that we've been wanting to happen since two weeks ago when we started, and this whole trip it's been a problem, but I'll give you a hint. We're heading to Target right now to buy a Paw Patrol truck because someone did something really good. Anyone in the back want to say what happened? What'd you do, Wyatt? I pooped in the potty. Yay! Yay! His first time ever. So now the potty train is out of the station and I feel like it's gonna make all the rest of our trips so much easier. So we are totally rewarding him with the Paw Patrol truck. I hope he Dreams really do come true. <laughs> What's up, honey? What is this? Pick me the potty. What'd you pick? Uh, no track of people. Very nice. And fire's in here. How exciting! Okay. What noise is? CC, I heard a pain in me. Screams though, it's coming from way up there. But how? Penguins can't fly. Well, they don't live in the jungle either. As you can see, we're having a bit of a party for Wyatt right now to um, celebrate the fact that he finally pooped in the potty. When I say party, I mean the kids are staying up late eating chocolate and watching Paw Patrol. But um, I actually feel like this is something that happens pretty frequently to us. Um, a lot of people ask why we decide to like travel so much, why we want to take our kids to as many countries per year as we can, and why we want to go on at least one trip every month. In addition to wanting our kids to be global citizens and everything else that comes with that, um, I think part of it is I think travel is really good for kids. We found that they tend to hit major milestones when we're on the road. Like Wyatt slept through the night for the first time when we took him on a trip for a night when he was one month old. Amelia's had a ton of milestones on trips and you know today we've been trying to potty train for a week and a half and we come here and Wyatt gets it. I don't know if it's just that he's relaxed or if it's the idea that we're kind of teaching our kids to be comfortable with the uncomfortable and I think that's something that's really hard to learn but helps them to kind of challenge themselves to transition to a next phase for them and to hit a better development. Amelia's been doing multiplication questions with me, she's fine, on this trip. And she wouldn't be so interested in that back at home, but on vacation she wants to do it. So I think that that's why it's worth it for kids. I mean, they just come into themselves in a way that they they don't when they're back home. And I love our lives back there, but I think something about being on the road just helps, and I hope to take them to as many countries as possible, so that by the time they're 18, they really have a chance to see who they are under any circumstance. So, no, no. What's the bucket? Ah, la, 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 Everyone have their sneakers on for the airport? Yes. Do we always wear sneakers on the airport? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we checked out of our hotel. We're heading home today, sadly. But before we go to the airport, we realized there's one thing we haven't done yet in North Carolina, and that's have 
North Carolina barbecue. We've never tried the barbecue here. We're kind of Texas barbecue people and we're a little a little nervous to try the North Carolina one and see if it stacks up, but um, we gotta give it a try and we'll try our best to not be biased and give it a fair review. Also a little stressed today. I'm having some issues with my email account, so it's always hard when on the last day of vacation you start being remembered of the real world back home, so I have to just, um, you know, accept that that's coming tomorrow and try and deal with that while still living in the moment of being here. But for now, yummy barbecue. What do you have there? I have all the beer in the world, including a sour, which I usually do not like, but I thought I'd be a little adventurous. And this is shaped like North Carolina, which seems very appropriate. Yeah, that was Virginia. <laughs> now it is shaped like North Carolina. Barbecue and grilled cheese. I'm trying it one. Are you sure you have pork cheese? Yeah. And what did oh. you get? <laughs> um, no, take your time. I got the two meat plate. I got brisket, which is supposed to be Texas style. And then of course I got Carolina top pork. This is supposed to be potato salad. It looks like home fries with cheese and cucumber salad. We just wrapped up our barbecue lunch at Mike's Big Barbecue Shack. It was fabulous. Good food, good drinks, really surprisingly good selection of local craft brews, dark, light, IPA, Hefeweizen. Man, I could go on and on. Uh, and, we said and I did. All oh, right. And we said goodbye to our friends. So sad. And we'll miss them. Uh, it was so nice coming to make the trip to come see them. But now we're headed back to the airport. So here's what we did. Here's a little travel hack. Danielle was driving the car, the rental car, which we have to return. She drove up to the drop-off point and dropped me off. I took in both of our two checked bags and we were able to let me check in just two bags under myself. So I already checked in and dropped off both bags and then I came back to the car to refuel so we don't have to pay rental car prices for fuel and then drop off the rental car and now it's going to be so much easier when we go take the shuttle back to the airport, we don't have to be lugging these two heavy bags. It's a great way to go, it makes it a lot easier. We actually booked first class by using points because we like to do travel hacking. So when you fly first class, you're allowed to do two checked bags. Next up, you'll see us walking through the airport uh, back to our flight back to New York. All right, so we're all back at the airport and we have a good amount of stuff on us, but um, Load it down. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Going back home. Here we go. Security, here I come. So today is a sad day. We do not have lounge access anywhere. So we're gonna just explore the airport and see if we can find somewhere to go. This thing right over here saved my life when I used to come here when Amelia was younger and they should be in every airport ever. It's a godsend and amazing for moms that are nursing. And it's crazy we don't have more of them. So Amelia, what are you doing? Is that yoga? Is that a good way to stay fresh? Yeah. Stay loose? Have you ever taken yoga lessons? Can you show us cat cow? Where you go cat and then cow, and then cat and then cow? That's not cut cow. <laughs>
What are you guys looking at? I saw sunset. Oh, it's New York City. Looks like we're back home. We're yeah, heading home. All right, you guys, let's go get our bags, okay? So we are back in New York, fighting a little bit of New York traffic to get back um, towards home and get these kids something to eat. So that's a wrap on the Roberts family trip to North Carolina. But we'll be traveling again very soon.